Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Alrighty, pack one, pick one. Pretty sweet rare with uh, Grasalax. Probably at its best in like a blue-white flyer archetype where we've got a bunch of small evasive creatures. But of course blue-white, not really a color pair that you end up in very often in this set. Still seems worth taking. Anything else noteworthy? Mole Hunter might be the best common. Pegasus isn't bad. So if we could somehow wield a Pegasus, I guess it would be pretty nice with Grasalax. Maybe a Ranger's Hawk, we'll see. Okay, second pack. Not seeing any blue cards I'm interested in. There is a Skullport Merchant, which is one of the best uncommons in the set, especially in red-black, of course. So that's potentially a card we can take, even though it's not the best pairing with Grasalax. Or we can take one of the two white cards, either Containment or Plate Armor, with the idea of still trying to go blue-white to maximize Grasalax. And these would both be fine in a blue-white deck. I think I should keep my options open and just take the Merchant. Someone took an uncommon over Skullport Merchant. There's not many that are better than Merchants. <clears throat> maybe like a Power Word Kill, maybe one of the uncommon Dragons. But I'll take the Merchant here and see where we end up. Okay. Well, we could go for Arborea Pegasus now. Again, there's no blue card that's amazing. There's also no black or really red card that I'm super hyped about for the red-black Steal and Sacrifice deck, for instance. So, I think I can take Pegasus and then we might still end up blue-white, we'll see. We did pass a black-white uncommon in pack once, it's... Maybe not the best idea to end up in black-white specifically, but we'll see. Pack number four, and we've got some goodies. Of course, Owlbear stands out, as well as Blue Dragon and Cave. I think I should just stick to the Blue Dragon, powerful card in blue, which is the color we most want to be in. Although, yeah, we're passing some good green here. Null Hunter, Owlbear, Basilisk, all playable cards. And then a cave, which is also a fine creature land in white. So, yeah. So far, black doesn't seem incredibly open. But everything else still kind of flowing. All right. Well, I'll probably take the Windseer now. There's also something on watch, which is a fine removal spell, especially in blue-white flyers, where we will be trying to race in the air, and then this will be a perfect removal spell to take out a ground creature that's attacking us. But Windseer seems like the better pick, since there's still a chance we don't end up blue-white. I mean, blue-white seems like the place to be. Although, as I say that, there's a price and a deadly dispute in the same pack, so it's probably too late to take a price here since we only have Merchant in black. So I'll probably just stick to the Windseer, but there's also Charm Sleep, Containment, two good removal spells that uh, also kind of hurts to pass here. But I think I still prefer the second Windseer for now. Goes well with our Grasalax, keeps us in blue. Charm Sleep, while fine, can be a bit tricky to cast at double blue. Alright, I guess we're just blue-white flyers. Playing our ally. Seems good. Do need to make sure we end up with a few two drops at the end of the draft. So something like a Dawnbringer Cleric would be a fine curve filler. But I think I still go with ally for now. And then... We'll have to try and fill out our curve later. Take a shocking grasp, even though it's 
probably not amazing in blue-white, much better in, let's say, blue-green, where creatures are more likely to get in a big fight. So we did not wheel the Hawk, we did not wheel Pegasus, we did wheel a Moonblast Cleric, which could still be okay if we end up with Charmed Sleep or Minimus Containment. But it is a bit worrying that even the Hawk is gone here, so maybe someone picked it up because they're drafting a Venture deck. But um, yeah, that's the type of card that would have been good in this deck. Take the 2-drop for the curve. Probably not going to play the Dagger. Can speculate on a Prowler, maybe in case we end up blue-green. I'll speculate on Barbarian over Potion. I guess I could take the Potion, maybe we end up with a, a Unicorn. Alright, so I'm not thrilled after pack one, mostly because we passed a few good blue and white cards, Minimus Containment, Charmed Sleep, and we didn't wield that Hawk. So, yeah, maybe white is not the place to be, but blue seemed pretty open. Well, don't have to ask me twice. Volo. Now, the awkward thing about Volo is that it doesn't really incentivize us to have multiples of the same card, but I guess it's fine. Wizard's also not great with Volo, which is a wizard himself. So definitely gonna require us to pivot. But I think it's still Volo here. And then, uh, yeah, we've got the wolf, I guess. So we might go blue-green. Don't mind a hill giant herd gorger at the top end. Evolving Wilds would also be fine. If we were still going with blue-white, I guess there's a Ranger's Hawk. But I think we're just going uh, blue-green at this point. Going three colors is going to be a bit rough. So probably want to avoid that. Since we don't have any Venture cards to make a treasure yet. Well... <laughs> I mean, Blue Dragon is a great card, but it is another Dragon, and it is another 7-drop. So not the best with Volo, but I might still take it over a Contact Other Plane. Already have Double Windseer and Volo at 4 mana. Yeah, sure. Take a Dragon. Oh man, another Windseer. I guess we'll take the Wizard class instead. Even though Windseer might be a better card overall. Herbalist also seems pretty weak. There's something on watch if we still wanted to go white, but I think at this point we have to commit to green. Okay, so I'm not really interested in green dragon necessarily, but at the same time Let's see, this is a human, so it's bad with Volo. We could take a Soul Knife Spy, which is Elf Rogue, which are not creature types we have a ton of. Sure. Fills out our curve at 3 a little bit. And there's an Elf Bard, Gnome Wizard. Wizard is just a bad creature type with Volo. But the Conjurer does help us ramp into Blue Dragon, which is still nice. So I, th I think I take it over a Guild Thief. Orc Rogue are relatively good creature types. Although, of course, being a 2-drop means we probably want to play before we get Volo in play. In most games. And I don't think we're really all that interested in Guild Thief as a creature. So we'll just take the Gnome. Okay, now what? Tiefling Shaman, that's a good creature type, helps us play defense, so that seems pretty good here. And Pixie Guide's also fine. Fairy, not a creature type we have a lot of. And uh, works well with the Ginny Winds here. It's a 2-drop, which we need it. Take a Dryad. 
helps us ramp into Gorger and Blue Dragon. All right, it's a bit of a strange draft. Had to change directions a few times, but could be a fun way to play with Volo. Yeah, we did pass a few good green cards. The Null Hunter, the Owl Bear. So definitely had to pass a few good ones. But if all goes according to plan, we'll be getting a ton of value from our rares. Happy to see Evolving Wilds. And I might play Cursed Idol here. It's criminal that there's still price of loyalty in the pack. But I'm not gonna hate draft it. Alright, maybe I'll play Herbalists. Well, Red seemed open. Last pack, probably go for Hunter's Mark as an excellent removal spell. Nadar's great, but not gonna splash white for it. Same with Containment and Priest. Already have our Herd Gorger, and the Druid is also not a great creature type, and our deck doesn't care all that much about pack tactics. Okay. Probably go with the Charmed Sleep over Second Wizard class, over Contact Other Plainness, more card draw. Like if I wheel a Ranger, even though it's not good with Volo, I can still consider playing it if we don't have many other 5 drops. But I'll go with the Charmed Sleep for now. Our deck is heavy blue, so the double blue and Charmed Sleep shouldn't be too much of an issue. Spoils as another removal spell. Didn't have a ton of removal beforehand, but now we picked up a few. So that's good. Hunter's Mark, Charm, Sleep, Spoils. And now we can focus on picking up more creatures later. So looking at our curve. Yeah, could use a few more good quality 2-drops. I'm liking the Air Cult Elemental as well. Good creature type. And uh, going Volo into Elemental is a nice curve. There's also Grim Bounty, of course, which is the best card in the pack. Apprentice, fine cards, just not great for this deck. Wizard's a bad creature type with Volo, and we don't care about venturing. That's a late Triumphant Adventure. Could take... Another Aircult Elemental. There's a Silver Raven, which is good with Grasalax. I guess we don't have many birds yet. Sure, we'll try the Silver Raven, I guess. Good synergy with both of our rares. And a Scry 1 could be useful at setting up our draws. If I didn't have four copies of Adventure, I would probably Rare Draft instead. Okay, don't really want Druid class. Might play the You Come to a River as a bounce spell. Another Price of Loyalty. Hurts to see. Okay, Frost Giant. Sadly, Herd Gorger is also a Giant. But it's still a nice 5 mana play after we play Volo. So I think it beats the Soul Knife Spy here. Good with our green fight spells as well. And I'll probably just rare draft a rogue class. Okay, now we're seeing the Ranger's Hawk. I uh, didn't think I'm playing any of these. Alright, contact other play might be okay. Choose your weapon, also potentially playable. A way to destroy a flying creature. Take the contacts. Another one. Didn't think I'm playing both, but seems better than our author options. Alright, so we've got a bit of a strange deck. But the hope is that we get to see Volo and Grasilanx do some cool things.
Yeah, without those two cards, our deck's pretty weak. So maybe playing the two contact other plane to draw into our good cards is not a bad idea. Seventeen lands. Definitely skewed more towards blue. And then we need to make about four cuts. So, we've got the creatures at the top. Shocking Grasp, probably cuttable. Cursed Idol, I could take it or leave it. Could see shaving one contact other plane. I like the three drops. Not thrilled about Herbalist, but it does help us hit our land drops, maybe ramp. So it's good alongside card draw like contact other plane, I guess. Silver Raven's only really good with Grasselax. So might be too ambitious. So that's potentially a cut. Probably cutting the Curse Idol at that point. Our curve is pretty high, but we do have Dryads and I guess Herbalist if we play it to help speed things up a little bit. Yeah, this is probably okay. And then play Come to a River as a bounce spell to have a bit more interaction, which also justifies playing the two card draw spells. And then one last cut. Maybe one of the top end cards. I guess we do also have Wizard class as another card draw effect. And maybe one contact can go still. Although, how often do you get Wizard class to level 3? Doesn't happen often. And I do have a lot of 3 drops in my curves, so it's possible that contact is just better than Wizard class. Are two dragons necessary? I wouldn't say necessary. It's more that it's an awesome creature to copy with Volo. And of course we're not guaranteed to draw both dragons, so copying one is often game over. Looking at our creature types, three wizards. Otherwise we're pretty split. And what are the wizards? Investigator, Volo, and... Conjurer. Yeah, that's fine. Investigator is just an early creature to trade off. Yeah, so it might be one of the card draw effects. I guess I'll try out a wizard class and cut the contact. Could have also considered playing 18 lands in this deck. But I'm hoping the card draw can help us find more lands. This hand is pretty high curve. I mean, if we draw a couple lands for the next couple turns, it's fine. But on the play, it's kind of rough. Yeah, I don't think I can keep this. Like, Spoils and Hunter's Mark aren't very good with just Investigator. This is better. So, logic would kind of say to put the blue dragon on the bottom. <laughs> Although a part of me wants to keep it because we have Volo. Guess we'll just have to hope to draw the other blue dragon. Uh oh. Battlecry Goblin is bad news, and even though I can Charm Sleep it, the ability still lingers. So I think I'll wait on the Charm Sleep and just draw some cards for now. Alright, I'm gonna need that green mana. 
Alright, now the charm sleep doesn't feel as bad. Could also bounce the goblin first, but it's not like I'm doing anything with the remaining mana. So I guess we'll tap it down. And then next turn we can maybe double spell. It's fine to play Conjure before Volo since it's a wizard anyway. Alright. So I could play Volo, and if I draw Forest I get to double Herd Gorger. If I have Conjure in play that can make double green for me. So I'm kind of liking Conjure and then keep up River, maybe bounce the Valor Singer, and then next turn play Volo, hope it survives, and then take it from there. Maybe we'll even draw like a two drop I can play afterwards. Could have technically even bounced my wizard class, but that seems a bit too dirtly. So ideally we draw like a 3-drop we can copy with Volo. Just a land. Alright, let's cross our fingers that it doesn't get removed. Yep. Alright, well, there goes our plan. Can I still play Herd Gorger? And then next turn level up Wizard class, I suppose. The monk makes our herd gorger pretty weak here. It's a fine trait. Still playing out my land since we have a bunch of card draw in the deck that I might be able to put to good use. And then I think I don't trade until I level up my wizard class and maybe grow the conjurer that way. The ward does make them pay a lot of mana at least. Sadly, can only use this at sorcery speed, so I cannot untamp the giant. Alright, so we can play Ginny and level up if we untap a land. Looking for a blue dragon, pretty much. Take a contact. Pretty good combo with wizard class. Alright, so we're probably gonna take one more hit. Can't forget about Battlecry Goblin pumping the opponent's goblins too here. So, opponent can pump three times. It's not enough to kill my giants. 
So they were maybe trying to set up an ambush, but failed. I think I gotta keep contact as an instant speed card draw effects to grow with wizard class. Even though I won't be able to cast whatever I draw into potentially. Could have also untapped the Ginny, but probably better off blocking with the Conjurer in case that trades. Alright, fourth mountain means they can still potentially uh Trade off even after we put two counters on the Conjurer. So they can only pump the Goblin three times. So two counters on the Frost Giant's enough to survive. Yep, Bon realizes the wizard class is about to trigger. Oh yes, draw three even. Do I want a pixie guide? Not really. So two on the giant is enough. And then the last one... Probably put it on the winds here. Or maybe the Conjurer so it can attack past the Monk. Might turn it into a creature. Nope, still keeps it as equipment. Our opponent's pretty close to dead here. And now with the Hunter's Mark we can take out the Monk. Can just do it now I suppose. Scion's fine. And then we'll see if they make it into a creature. If they do. Could keep a, a genie on defense, I guess. We're still hitting them for 12. And then next turn we can kill them. That way we have two flyers back. Also good to watch out for the battle cry goblin and some more hasty goblins off the top. Probably safest to double block. Well, we actually got to see Wizard Class do some powerful things this game. And got my first natural 20 on a contact author plane. Felt pretty good. Is a sword a goblin? I don't think so, no. I mean, how can I say no to this? Just need to draw like five lands and we'll be fine. Yes. 
Scion. Okay, now I gotta start deciding like how I wanna sequence my creatures to maximize Volo. I'm kind of liking playing the Spy because we can maybe clear a path with Scion in case we don't hit our fourth land drop. Opponent might be kind of playing scared or feeling forced to use removal. Alright, I guess it works out. I guess I don't mind drawing a land, so I'm gonna Scion before fetching and attacking. That's a good roll. Next turn it's Volo time. And our opponent's probably gonna start playing defense. Could potentially Hunter's Mark if that allows us to go off with our Soul Knife Spy. Hmm. So the Hunter means they can kill Volo next turn. So I probably have to take it out with Hunter's Mark. Still doesn't let my Spy attack past the Captain, but forcing a trade is maybe not a bad idea. Yeah, I think we're happy slowing the pace of the game down and trading creatures. So let's just do this. Probably gonna block with Hunter, maybe they smell a pump spell and block with Captain, but either way, this works. Alright, and now hopefully the path is clear for Volo. Trading there seemed fine. A red-white, often a color pair that cares about equipment, so the fewer creatures they have in play, the weaker those equipment become. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's time. I could wizard class draw. It is true that our opponent hasn't had a great opportunity to use removal yet, but they do need a pretty specific removal spell. That's fine. At the very least we can double wolf and wizard class. Alrighty. All aboard the Volo value train. Uh, that can eventually take out Volo, so hopefully we get double giant before that happens. Spoils. Doesn't quite kill the hunter here. I mean, we could spoils the paladin and then the hunter doesn't have pack tactics. Maybe that's the play. Maybe should have waited until end of turn for them to use the half elf monk in case their last card's a pump spell. I wanted to do it in my turn in case they drew a pump spell. Oh, that's unfortunate. Now they just sacrifice Volo to the Hunter. Don't see Price of Loyalty in Red-White very often. But I guess they had double uh, Tiger Tribe Hunter as their sacrifice outlet. Oh well, we'll have to uh, try and recover.
And then land 7 for blue dragon should be pretty strong. Still haven't drawn with our wizard class. Well, Volo keeps dying, but our deck is still good enough, apparently, to pull through. Good point. We don't need Volo to double Dragon. Okay, a dried with no green. Probably still a keep. So we're looking at a spy into Windseer. Opponent with a full Grixis over there. Soul Knife Spy and Scion are bust buddies. Let me guess, deal to damage, make a treasure. Ooh, Skullport instead. Opponent's playing it safe. I'll keep the Hunter's Mark. Probably don't need Conjurer. Hunter's Mark maybe lets us uh, get past the merchants. Could be nice two for one. So now Hunter's Mark on the Soul Knife Spy doesn't really work as well if they block with Ogre, although I imagine they're more likely to block with a Rust Monster. So I think I still go for it. Might want to leave the Windseer back. This is a close call. This would be perfect. I think I kill Merchant over Ogre. I mean, Ogre's annoying too. Opponent is stuck on three lands, so there is something for killing that instead. Merchant just kind of worries me if they have Price of Loyalty type shenanigans. And I do have a Spoils, which can kill the Ogre next turn. If they attack, they don't have a blocker back for Spice. I think it's still Merchant, but it's close. Feel less bad about not killing the Ogre now that they hit their fourth land drop. We'll see. Dungeon map's fine. And do they have removal for Spy? Charmed Sleep. Okay. Ooh, Volo. 
Okay, okay, okay. So, do we go for Volo? Do we spoil the ogre first? Is the question. Man, it, it is tempting to play Volo. But, um, uh, don't really want this ogre making more treasure necessarily. Now, well, let's, let's spoil. And attack. If I draw Forest, I can maybe still get immediate value from Volo by playing the Dryad. Which would be pretty neat. Yeah, Conjure would have been fun to untap the Spy with Charm Sleep, but that's alright. Would rather draw Volo a turn sooner. Okay, start by attacking. See if there's a response. Alright, I mean, I think it's Volo time. They even bounced our wins here, so we can double it. Don't touch it. Ah. That's pretty lame. Would have been able to double wins here and ride. Well, one day we'll get to double something with Volo. Doesn't seem to be today. I'll take a Grasselax and probably Wizard class too. Is that too much card draw? Is there such a thing as too much card draw? Mm, the Wizard class might be unnecessary. Still have a Contact other Plane in hand. I mean, if your opponent's going to keep killing our stuff, I guess having Wizard class isn't bad. Sure. Can always decide to shuffle with Dryads if I really don't want it. <laughs> the unlimited hand size and wizard class might be relevant. Good point. Alright, so I mean I could Scion to tap down Investigator, but I'm fine if the Dryad trades for it. And then... Keep Scion to maybe tap something down in the opponent's turn. I guess we just keep up Scion then. I see, blue dragon. Okay. Well, still have one point of power on the Grasselax, but opponent stays back with the Investigator. So if I were to attack with both, they can just block Grasselax. Oh, I guess I can bounce Grasselax back as well, but then of course the ability doesn't trigger. So I guess I force a trade with Scion. Take it from there. Have seven mana this turn. Just not quite enough to double spell. Alright, I get to draw. Probably go for Ginny Prowler. All right, put on packs it in. I'll take it. Sure. We're looking at maybe a turn for Frost Giants. Hunter's Mark for removal, Scion more interaction. So, a good hand if the Giants can enter the battlefields early on. Ooh, 
Ooh, blue black rogues with a, a rogue class. Okay. Well, Hunter's Mark should be quite powerful in this matchup. Not that it needs more help. And yeah, we're just gonna play a Giants. And hopefully ride it to victory. Wins here. Good target for Hunter's Mark. Ooh, Volo, you say. Okay, okay. It's probably gonna die to the Spiked Pit Trap, as we all know, but uh, it's worth a try, I guess. And then I probably just Hunter's Mark the Windseer right now. I mean, if our opponent spends their next turn killing Volo, we're still hitting them for 7, Scion to tap down their next blocker. And our opponent's probably just dead. Volo's just here to cheer on the team. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they essentially killed Volo out of spite at this point. It's like, I'm gonna lose, but you're not gonna have any fun. Okay, on the play. <laughs> Eh, is it finally Volo's time to shine? Probably not, but... Hey, at least the Soul Knife Spy is gonna take one for the team. I guess we want to play Conjurer, since we can actually double the Spy with Volo, unlike the Conjurer. Okay, green-white doesn't have the highest density of removal. Um, sure. I want my wizard class back, thank you very much. Oh man, playing the spy is tempting though, if they don't have a blocker, but they most likely do. And then I'm gonna want to... Uh, Extra mana from Conjure lets me play maybe the Ginny or Wizard class plus Activate to find my green mana. Alright, well, they had an, a Priest of Ancient Lore, so I feel good about not playing the Spy last turn now. Come on, green mana. All right, we'll have to try again. We're only playing one more island than forest, but it feels like we've drawn a lot more islands. Uh-oh, cleric class is scary. Containment my wizard class. Uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Not sure what to say here, but... Uh, that's my green mana. And then I can still play Pixie Guide. Okay, maybe there's still a chance. Next turn, double wins here if Volo survives. Yeah, Contra is a wizard, so it doesn't work too well with Volo. But everything else in hand is going to get doubled. Probably starting with the Windseer. Look at the Pixie Synergy too now. Going to get to scry so much. Alright, I'll keep the forest. Do I need Island afterwards? Yeah, sure. I can make extra mana with the Conjurer too, <laughs> and our opponent explodes after we scry two cards to the top. Well, I mean, <laughs> shouldn't have given us the green mana. Volo finally came through and led us to the seventh win. Alright, well, pack one, pick one was Grasalax, but this was much more of a Volo deck.
crank some packs. Hive of the Eye Tyrant, pretty good creature land. Also, this pack has stacked Talisman, one of the best uncommons, Grim Bounty, probably the best common in the entire set. So, kind of hard to pick, but it's probably going to be a black card. Another Hive. Haven't had the pleasure to activate Gretchen yet. Plate armor is quite decent, although I've had pretty mixed results with the equipment deck so far. Mind Flare also excellent, if you can ever combo this with Volo, you're in heaven. Yeah, Dragon's Fire might be a close card with uh, Grim Bounty for sure. It's much cheaper instant speed. Another Mind Flare here. But yeah, Grim Bounty and Dragon's Fire, definitely the two best commons in the set. Frog Hemoth also excellent, probably at its best in a color pair that can actually kill stuff, so like red-green or black-green, I imagine, over blue and white. And an Inferno of the Star Mounts, very powerful rare, mythic rare even. Alright, sweet. Well, that was a fun draft in the end. Blue might not be the best color, but if it's wide open and you get some good rares, then it can still work out just fine. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.